Hi guys, John here. This is another episode of Ultra Dungeon Master. And I wanted to talk about briefly a... Uh, so about a story, uh, about some stories that came up while I was running uh, my f uh, s some players through Dungeon Module S4, The Lost Caverns of Tessokath. And like I said in my previous video, this was, all, for a lot of the players, this was their first, uh, first edition, old school, uh, module. Uh, I ran it very, uh, I ran it as a very large party, as a very expedition-oriented party. That was kind of the idea I got from uh, various people online, and thank you. If those people are watching, thank you for that suggestion. Um... One of the first encounters they had in the Lost Caverns, I don't want to give too much away in case anybody wants to read it or uh, play in it or currently playing it, but one of the first encounters is they enter a room well, and it's a cavern, which is kind of an empty cavern, kind of ends, goes up a bit, they don't really see the ceiling. And almost immediately, 20, I think it's 20, yeah, 20 Sturges just come down and attack them. Now, if you don't know what a Sturge is, Sturges, Sturges in D&D are kind of almost like over, overgrown mosquitoes. Um, and the, or the overgrown mosquitoes are like bats, like half bat, half mosquito. And they kind of just come down, they have this long beak, and they kind of just cut along down, burrow into the adventurer's head, and you have to like pull them out thing and it's just and like they suck the blood from the adventurers or suck their brains if you want to use that term um yeah it was, just, it was a really fun encounter it was really also fun to see with a lot of the newer people who aren't quite used to the old school style very taken aback from it and like a lot of their first kind of approaches even to some of the newer fighters they had the kind of back up a bit and kind of they, like a couple of them left the room like like the wizard left and then a fight or the ranger left and it's just like when you have the paladin and a couple of the others uh, the, the paladin who was new to the player was new to first edition but not new to role playing he was his player kind of kind of stood up had, had his bow had his sword you know kind of slashing people who got hit and it just it was a Fa kind of a fascinating encounter to see, like, and, it, and that's kind of what you want to strive really, really in any edition you play with. That's kind of what, like the the amount of monsters has changed. You know, people. You know, it's kind of a good kind of pace for things. Um, where you have just twenty sturges just come out of it because it's a cave and that's where they live. But also, just it was fun to see the players react in the ways that they did, and just. Some people, the barbarian, and then the role playing it spurred after the after the Sturges died. The role playing afterwards happened. The barbarian said, "Oh, you cowards! You left us. We had this. We had this fine." And then guys like, "This thing is it got stuck in my head." And just it was it was a good role playing moment that I that I enjoyed. That I, you know you just you don't see a lot of that. And it was fun to see, and it was especially fun to see new players to kind of OSR stuff and old school gaming, kind of see it, you know, kind of get, oh, okay, so this is, it's going to be that type of game. Okay. Which is really important, particularly if you play old school games, I think. You have to, you have to let people know, it's like, no, the, the consequences matter and, you know, the monsters may not be appropriate to your level in modern game terms, but... And I don't know why I put your quotes there, but it just, you know, it, it's going to be tough. There's going to be 20 surges or 50 cobalts. Although there are no 50 cobalts in the, the adventure I ran. Another thing about um, the Lost Caverns of Tessokath that I want to hint on, that I want to, I want to talk about, is the map. Not only is there, I'll show it to you, that's the wilderness map you give to the players. But also, just the dungeon map itself is massive. Like it's it, it, it's a two-level dungeon. 
which is not. I mean, when there's 50 dungeons and, you know, in the script of d and it's not that big. I mean, in this book alone, there's the expedition, the expedition to the Barrier Peaks, which that's got, like, I think, like, five levels, six levels? Possibly just four. But, um, yeah, it was just, it's got so many twists. And turns. It is literally, you're going through a cavern, and what would you expect? There's twists and there's turns, and there's, you know, and it's also the ruins of a... A wizard la a wizard lair, you know, the Witch King of the Parlands, you know. So there's a lot of that, and there's a lot of ruins, a lot of things that don't quite make sense. And it's a very good. It's kind of and about that. In my opinion, the the map is the the, the dungeon itself is very much a bridge of older D and D modules of like against the giants, uh, slave lords. Well, actually, I'm so much of words. Uh, but I guess it, like, uh, Temple of the Frog, like, kind of those zany things, like Ghost Tower of Inverness, those like zany adventures, but also like this kind of, that shift to a more serious adventure that you get with kind of Slave Lords, Village of the Temple of Elemental Evil, and um, the Dragonlance series especially. And that was kind of interesting to see, and I, and I think it's one of Gygax's best, I think. He, he definitely kind of perfected his craft of adventure writing. I mean, and, and Gygax gets a little... He gets a little flack for adventure writing. I mean, he is the man who made the Tomb of Horrors, which... It's fun to play through once, fun to run it once, but... There are better adventures out there. I mean, there are just better modules out there. His Against the Giants is better. His Lost Cabins of Tessicath are better. Uh, Forgotten Temple of Therazden is better, in my opinion. Uh... Two of Four is just kind of that black stain, like, ooh, you know, especially, it's like, it one shot's the party. It's like, oh, well, okay. But yeah, uh, one thing on the map I want to say again, it, it was fun to see my one player map out the dungeon, which is no easy feat. Even Gygax says mapping is almost impossible, but uh, my player, he managed. He managed to map it out. He had his little notebook, he had his graph paper there, and he was drawn it out, he expanded paper, took two pages, drew it out. It's like, okay, okay, so th and when, you know, there's like a teleport shenanigans thing in the dungeon, it's like, okay, so that means we're here. It was, just, it was fun to see, and it really saved the party. Like, if the party didn't have that mapper, you know, if you didn't have him mapping, you guys would be lost. Or it just, it would be a different game. It would be, it'd be a different adventure. Yeah, they would not have had that ease of reference, which is good. And I, and that's something I think a lot of people take for granted when you have... And I did this with Major. I saw a lot of... I did saw some of this with Major's Law. This was theater in the mind. But... And I like miniatures in my role-playing games. I do. But I think a lot of people forget with miniatures is that mapping. Is, you know, it's like, well, do you guys know where you are? You know, like, it's kind of that role-playing, you know. You know, a lot of times people think, oh, the DM wrote that down. He's not gonna... He's writing this all. He has the map. He's writing, showing us. We don't need to map it. And I just think it's really neat to... Use a map and have a map and... Kind of fun, you know? It, it really is that... That old school experience, you have to really have a mapper and kind of look at kind of stuff. Because it's a lot of what... The old school... It's a lot of what the OSR and like AD and D and first edition, older editions. It's really what they are. It, it, it's not. It's yes. It's combat, and it's also we are exploring. And explorers make maps. They have provisions, you know. And that's, I think, why I've, why I like a like a like I like other games. I like fifth edition. I like Pathfinder. But um, I think that's what really hints me to the OSR a lot more is that it, it is adventuring. You are adventurers, and you're going out, and there might be, you know, a vampire in that dungeon, or it could be 20 sturges that you need to fight off. You know, it, 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 it's a very interesting concept of role-playing, and it's really trying to put yourself into, put yourself into the role of, a, of an adventurer in a fantasy world, or even a an adventurer in uh, the 19th century or early 20th century, you know, going up to Egypt and searching for King Tut or whatever, you know, like, you know, being brave and just going out there and saying, I'm going to go do this, I'm going to have riches and treasures, and I'll tell you the tales. 
Anyway, that was kind of a long video, just kind of of an RPG story. Of some stories I collected to add to the vault and the channel and just to make some content. I hope you, as always, I hope you enjoyed this video. Like, comment, subscribe. Um, if you feel. Uh, as always, I'm John. Um, this has been Vault of the Dungeon Master and happy gaming!